Great Scott. Great Scott. Great Scott. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fabulous episode of Great Scott. I'm Scotty V. Thanks for watching. Today, I want to talk about Zack Snyder's Justice League. I didn't want to do a review too quickly because I know that there can be spoiler issues, and I didn't want to spoil anyone. Also, I know that everybody and their mother was sort of talking about it, and I didn't want to say the same old things or do it at the same time, which, of course, might have helped uh, to get it noticed because people were talking about it, and it was popular, and now it's been almost a month. And so it's kind of over at this point, although we've got the whole Restore the Snyderverse thing going on. I enjoyed Zack Snyder's Justice League. It was leaps of tall buildings better than the theatrical version, which anybody who had been watching the Zack Snyderverse before that knew the way those films sort of felt. And a lot of people had problems with the way they felt. They were darker, they were more serious. Superman was sort of hopeless in a lot of instances. He seemed very sad. He didn't seem particularly upbeat, which is a way a lot of Superman fans generally like to see him. But it was taken very seriously, and there wasn't a lot of jokiness. There were some moments of levity, but not very many. And when you look at the theatrical version of Justice League, you get a lot of jokes. They were trying to be Marvel-y. But the problem is, Marvel has been planning this thing and doing this thing for so many years, and they knew what they were doing, and each writer and each director coming in knew and was told from the beginning the way they wanted this overall universe to feel. And there was an overall planning committee and overall groups of people that did these things. Zack was really the only guy, and he received sort of pushback from the studio from the very beginning. And of course, the fans not being 100% on board with the way it turned out gave Warner's pause and made them want to change things. And by the time they got to Justice League, everything was so strained and everybody was so upset. And then, of course, Zack Snyder's tragedy just made him decide that it wasn't worth it at that point in time and he needed to step away from the film. So, of course, nobody ever thought that this was going to happen, but we finally get it. And when we see it, we see it's definitely a long movie. So you either need four straight hours where you're okay with watching a movie for that long. And I've always said, I'll take weekend-long superhero movies. Or you need to break it up. And initially, they had announced they were going to make it four one-hour episodes, which I thought was a cool idea. Then they decided to put it all together. Now there have already been reports that certain movies have already easily beaten the viewership of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Part of that could be people who are still bitter about Zack Snyder having a movie franchise. And some of them could be true. I am not going to put any stats here like that. But I will say the movie is definitely worth watching. It improves on every hero's story. It gives you more back information about every hero. And because Marvel released, in general, single movies about solo heroes before they released group movies or before other heroes began appearing in other heroes' movies, we always got more information or got to know each hero a lot better in that universe. So fans of DC were saying, why didn't you do it like Marvel? Or at least some people were. But that's neither here nor there. That's not what they did. And they decided to go ahead with Justice League after only two Zack Snyder movies. And then Wonder Woman, which was also influenced by Zack Snyder, but not directed by him. Then they go back and do Justice League, and it's sort of... By the time you got to the theater version, where you had some footage from Snyder and you had some footage from Whedon, it just didn't work. So this one really works. I definitely recommend it. But I do have some issues, and I have issues going forward. And going forward is something we might not even get to. We probably won't, although... Nobody expected that there would be a Snyder Cut of Justice League, even though people had been calling for it from the beginning. And I knew from the beginning that there was a Snyder Cut. I had said it to many various people. I had said that lots of footage got cut, and I had said that this movie that we saw was not the Snyder movie that we were going to see. People argued with me that it was his movie, his name's on it, it does say directed by, but that's because of credit rules and the way the Directors Guild works or something along those lines. But they definitely refilmed over half the movie, hence the Henry Cavill mustache, and they decided that, that their new footage of Henry Cavill smiling more often was more important than the fact that his face looked all mutated and weird, which is just another big criticism that everybody talks about when they see the theatrical Justice League. And I know a lot of people still say it was a cool movie. Part of that is because they did give the movie more levity. They did give Henry Cavill sort of more hopeful things to do and say and he smiles a lot. For me, Superman's not all about just smiling all the time. And when you see him return in the Zack Snyder Justice League, there's a lot more to it. 
His scenes with Martha and Lois are a lot more integral, they're a lot more emotional, they're a lot more important, and they're just more satisfying to watch. The biggest thing that bothers me about the Zack Snyder Justice League is the same biggest thing that bothered me, other than the silliness of the theatrical version of Justice League, and that is that at the end of BVS we are shown the stones and dirt lifting, indicating that there is still life in the coffin where Superman is buried, or there is energy in the form of Clark's body that is buried there. So my expectation was when the follow-up to BVS, which ended up being Justice League, came out, we would see that somebody would say, or there would be some indication that because Kal-El's body still exhibited signs of life in the form of energy, or whatever it is that caused those stones to rise, is the reason why he is able to be brought back, or the reason why he comes back. In the comics, it's some sort of Kryptonian stasis where his body is healing, and then he needs the black suit to get all of his sun strength back. He wears the black suit in the Zack Snyder League for no particular reason other than to say Zack said he knew the fans wanted it or he knew it fit. There is a scene where he flies into space with the suit on and he stands in front of the sun soaking in all the energy, which is something he's done several times in the universe, but there's no indication that he needed to do that because he easily wipes the floor with all the members of the Justice League, possibly even easier than he did in the theatrical version. So it's pretty clear that death didn't cause any permanent weakness or, like in the comic books, he came back as if he was just a normal man and it took him a while. The idea of wearing the black suit was to absorb enough of the energy from the sun. That's not how he ends up getting his powers back anyway, but that was the idea. And they don't do that in this version, but the, the biggest thing that bugs me is that they don't really address the fact that we were shown he was either still alive or still had signs of life. They still do the Flash with the Mother Box thing, which I didn't love to begin with, but it is a team movie and they do use that whole thing where the team all comes together. The other problem is they say many times throughout this movie that Superman is needed. Without Superman, we can't win. The reason the bad guys came now is because they know the Kryptonian's gone and the reason the Mother Box is activated is because there's no Kryptonian to stop them. So they make a big deal about we have to get Superman back. There's some speculation that it'll cause problems. There's Aquaman sort of saying this is not a good idea, but they have to do it because they need Superman. But then when Superman comes back, sure, he stops Steppenwolf's axe before Steppenwolf can kill Cyborg, who is trying to separate the mother boxes, but he needs more energy, so the Flash is out there running, and he's supposed to build up a charge, unlike any charge he's ever built up before, so that he can feed it to Cyborg somehow, and Cyborg can somehow separate the mother boxes, which he doesn't have enough power to do on his own. So Superman comes back, it's a really cool thing, says he's not impressed by Steppenwolf, and easily finishes him off, okay? But the problem is, Flash didn't build up the energy he needed, so the mother boxes connect and the portal begins to open. Darkseid standing there looking all dark -side y and the entire universe is wiped out. Now, there's a couple of problems with that. One is, all of the heroes break down. You see their muscles, their bones, and then their body, and then they fall to black ash or whatever, because Cyborg didn't get the mother boxes separated in time because Flash didn't have the confidence to get up to speed to give him the energy that he needed to do it. Then Flash realizes that now there's never ever gonna be another better time because the whole universe, the whole world has been wiped out and no other heroes are there, and he has to run back through time, even though he said that that can cause problems with the timeline, which I guess we're going to get into in the new Flash movie that is still being made. So because he's able to run back through time, time reverses, you see their muscles, their bones come back, the heroes are all still alive, Flash gives the charge Cyborg needs, Cyborg calls for Superman's help because he still can't separate them alone, so maybe that's your answer there, but my issue was it seems pretty quickly evident that Superman wasn't all that needed because Flash can run back through time and turn back time anyway, so Superman shows up, stops Steppenwolf temporarily. Everybody is wiped out because the portal starts to open. Flash has to run back through time to save everybody. So if Superman doesn't show up, the world then gets wiped out and Flash is still out there doing it. So Flash would still be compelled to finally reach within him and get the confidence he needed that he didn't have before to run as fast as he could to turn back time and save everyone anyway. So I guess we could then be in a loop where without Superman, Steppenwolf kills Cyborg and then he doesn't get the power he needs to separate them. And even when he does get the power from the Flash that he needs, he still has to call for Superman's help in order to have the strength needed to pull them apart. So I guess there's a need for him to be there, but it seems less important than the fact that Flash is going to turn back time anyway. So if it doesn't go right, he's just going to turn back time until it does go right. But then maybe without Superman, it could never go right. I don't know. I just felt like his return, while they talked about it all through the movie, was super important and necessary, seemed like it was inconsequential because Flash turned back time anyway. And the other thing that bothers me there is we've seen many stories in the comics and in the cartoons about 
about Superman and or the Justice League facing off with Darkseid and his armies and his people. But what happens here is the portal partially opens or starts to open and the entire universe is wiped out and without Flash out there to turn back time, they all would be dead. But that means Darkseid never even comes through. We never get to see the Omega Beams. We never get to see a battle, which we weren't going to see in this movie anyway. But the indication seems to be that the portal just partially opening and Darkseid just being all Darkseid, he is enough to destroy all of the heroes and all of humanity in the world. So how would we ever get to a point where Darkseid and the armies of Darkseid came through like they fought the gods back in the day? Because if the portal opening part way and Darkseid being all Darkseid, he is enough to destroy everyone and kill all of humanity, then how would we ever have a face-off and how would we ever get to what Zack Snyder is saying the third movie in the Justice League trilogy would be and that would be Superman leading the armies of men against the armies of Darkseid and Superman coming head to head with Darkseid himself. If the portal opening part way and Darkseid being all Darkseid, he is enough to destroy all of humanity and the Earth, then he would never have to come through. And that's what we seem to be shown here at the end of the Zack Snyder Justice League, that the portal just opening part way and Darkseid standing there all Darkseid, he is enough to destroy all of humanity. So there's never going to be able to be a phase off because something about the evil energy that Darkseid and his minions embody is enough to destroy all of humanity by just opening a portal part way and having him standing there being all Darkseid. So I don't really understand how we would ever get to what I don't want to get to, which is what Zack Snyder is saying would happen if we restore the Snyderverse. His plan was to have two more Justice League movies, one of which was going to be Superman succumbing to the anti-life equation because Lois Lane was killed, and he becomes evil and an evil dictator and starts killing everybody. And then, Flash again turns back time, which we already saw, which is something that's sort of a trope in movies, and most people in general seem to get annoyed by time travel because it just sort of erases anything that would happen. So if you know that you have the power to travel back in time, like Superman did in Superman 2, or in the first Superman, depending on which version you like, or both, <laughs> then it eradicates any possibility of any bad things ever happening because if the hero lives, he can just turn back time. So if the Justice League ever fails, Flash can always just turn back time. Or the Donner version, Superman can always just turn back time. So there's never really any threat that's any big deal, except for killing the hero that can travel back through time. So as long as that hero survives, all the other heroes and all of the humanity can be saved every time. So that's a problem, but that's sort of a thing that happens in time travel movies anyway. If you give anybody the ability to travel back in time and change history, then you're sort of taking away any threat that might happen in the future, because you go, well, but he could just turn back time like he did last time. But Zack has now said on several interviews that his plan for Justice League was to have a second movie where Superman became evil and a third movie where Superman's the Superman we all know, the one everybody's been complaining hasn't existed yet in this universe. One that is hopeful, one that does embody hope, one that is trusted and loved by all the people, but how could he ever be if he, one movie ago, was killing everybody in an evil dictator. Oh, well, nobody would know that because Flash would turn back time, Batman would sacrifice himself to save Lois, which would stop Superman from becoming evil because then he would have the willpower to fight off the anti-life equation, stop Darkseid, lead the armies of men, and win the world back. Which is great, except for us viewers, we would know that had Batman not gone back in time and not saved Lois, that Superman, our hero that we've been watching since Man of Steel, would become this evil embodiment, a dictator that would kill people because Lois Lane died. I know the anti-life equation is what he succumbs to, but he succumbs to it because he's emotionally distraught and he doesn't have the strength of will to fight anymore. That's also a huge character flaw that I don't think Superman fans need or want. Some people are saying it would be so interesting to see Superman finally completely unleashed and the power that he really had and that nobody was able to stop him as much as Mera and or Deathstroke say they could. And I'll agree, that would be pretty interesting. I like the Injustice story. I like to be shown that Superman is more powerful than any living being anywhere. And we sort of saw that in the Justice League fight where he comes back from the dead and takes out the whole Justice League. And Lois is the key there. But the problem with the future ideas, if we ever get to them, which we probably won't because it would be crazy complicated to get all the actors needed when they're working on the universe proper. And then the WB has said that the Zack Snyder Justice League is an alternate Earth and that the theatrical Justice League that we saw is the one that we're playing forward from. That would mean that you'd need Gal Gadot and that would mean that you'd need Jason Momoa and that would mean that you'd need Ray Fisher and that would mean that you'd need all the other actors to be involved in both sides of the universe. One for a streaming service that I still can't wrap my head around how they make money because I had HBO and so when HBO Max was released I got HBO Max. I don't pay any more. I am paying whatever the subscription is in my cable package, which is probably less than just subscribing to HBO by itself. And I'm sure there are people 
around the world, wherever it's available, that did have to subscribe if they wanted to see it. But it can't be as much as a billion dollars that some of these movies make when they get released in theaters. So the plan for WB moving forward is to release the ongoing movies in theaters once this whole pandemic situation is over. Things are improving and hopefully by the end of this summer we'll be able to start opening things more and, and theaters are open to some degree now but they're in, in minor capacities and, and I don't have any plan to go back to the theater anytime soon. I, I personally enjoy watching four hour epics on my big 70 inch TV at home when I can pause it and I can get snacks and I can go to the bathroom and I can do whatever I need. I love it. But some movies like Zack Snyder's Justice League perhaps would be great on a big IMAX screen but I can't see them moving forward with two separate universes where a streaming service universe would cost them possibly more money to do it the way Zack does it and somehow it cost him anywhere between 70 million and some more than that to do what he did and that movie was already completed. The, the editing just wasn't finished and the effects just weren't finished and it still cost him 70 million dollars. So I'm not sure how you could make a 200 million plus project for HBO Max several times over because he needs several more movies to restore the Snyderverse. And I know we've got The Rock and we've got other actors that are involved in the universe saying we need to restore it. And I know a lot of fans want to see it. And if it would continue the way I felt this Justice League movie continued and Superman kept getting better, I would love that. But Zack Snyder has said, we need to see this journey and we've never seen it before. And some fans are saying, we've already seen the ultra goody two-shoes blue Boy Scout Superman in the Donner film. We needed a different version of Superman. We needed something we hadn't seen before. And I guess that's partially true. And I, that's why I liked this version of Superman, a more human-ish version of Superman who has some doubts or isn't sure where his place in the world is and trying to find it. That doesn't mean that I want to see a murdering evil dictator because Lois Lane died. And I know I keep discounting the anti-life equation, but that's still, even if the anti-life equation is there, if with Lois Lane existing, he's able to overcome it, he should be able to overcome it without Lois Lane existing. And I understand he's in an emotional state, in theory, in this story, and that that's why he doesn't have the willpower to fight it off. But then what we do is we make Batman the ultimate hero and Batman correct all along, because even The Flash says, you were right about him all along. You need to stop him. Lois Lane is is the key. And why do we as Superman fans need to see that Batman once again was right about something all along and this particular something he was right about is that Superman is a danger to society and if there's an even 1% chance that he is our enemy we have to take it as an absolute certainty. I don't want to see that. I'm not looking forward to Batman laughing and saying, told you so. I know he's not going to do that. But that's what we're going to get. And that's what Zack Snyder wanted to continue with. And of course, Superman's supposedly going to be redeemed in the third movie where he leads the armies of men. But Batman's going to be gone because he's going to have to have sacrificed himself to save Lois Lane. And hopefully Batman wouldn't know that he sacrificed himself to save Lois Lane after turning back time because Superman became evil. And hopefully none of the other heroes would know it. And hopefully none of the rest of the world would know it. But we would know it. We would know that our hero wasn't strong enough to overcome unless Batman became the ultimate hero and made the ultimate sacrifice. So that's a big problem for me. So that's why I'm not looking to restore the Snyderverse. I'd like to if we don't have that. I don't even mind a 10 minute part. We kind of had that already in Justice League Zack Snyder edition. He was sort of dark and willing to defeat all of the Justice League. He didn't kill them. Maybe he was going to kill Batman. Lois stopped him. So even that is negative enough. You know, but a lot of fans are already disappointed in what Zack has done to Superman. You know, Superman's supposed to embody hope. Superman's supposed to be trusted by all the world. Superman's supposed to be the greatest hero. So we've already kind of seen enough of the darkness that lies in humanity and in Superman. We don't need to see more of that, I don't think. So if that's the Snyderverse we're going to be restoring, I'm not looking forward to it if it happens. I think there's a lot of logistics that would have to be worked out, and I don't even know if it's possible if it were to happen. I would watch. And I'm sure I would be entertained to some degree, but I would be extremely disappointed that we had to break down our favorite hero in order to do it. And Zack, from the beginning, has been criticized for not understanding Superman. I, I think he does to some degree, but I also think he wants to tell this darker version of the story, this Watchmen-esque version of what could happen to power unchecked. But we have other stories for that. We have other characters for that. We have original characters for that where we can do whatever we like, but why present the only theatrical version of Superman that we have currently and teach people who get most of their ideas about who these characters are from movies, because most people don't read comics and or play video games and or watch animated shows. They go to movies that are big event movies like Justice League or like Man of Steel because they kind of like Superman, but they don't really know that much about him other than he's a good guy. I still have people who say Superman's a dick and they say it because they read The Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller, who to my mind clearly doesn't like Superman all that much. So I can see the argument when 
when people say Zack must not like or know Superman all that much because of the way he presents him. I was very invested in Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and now Justice League, and I liked the way it went. But I don't want to see it go darker, and I don't want to see an evil Superman. But I do hope Henry Cavill gets to continue as the Man of Steel moving forward in some capacity. If the only way to do that is to restore the Snyderverse and see this weird alternate version, and if Warner Brothers is saying that the Snyderverse is the alternate Earth and that the moving forward theatrical verse is the current prime Earth, then I guess we could say that it's sort of like the Injustice League. The reason I like Injustice as a story is because the Superman that we love from our universe that we've been reading about is the one that comes through the portal and stops the evil Superman. So in the end, our hero gets to be the hero, and that's a different version. There could be evil versions of any hero anywhere as long as they're alternate versions, but it sounds like what we're being told is that the Man of Steel version from the Zack Snyder Man of Steel is the one that goes through all of these things and then eventually triumphs, but only after we as the audience know that he was capable of and did all of these horrible things. So, that's my take on it. Hopefully you watched Justice League, and hopefully you enjoyed it as I did, even though I did have some issues. But I think you can say that about any movie. There will be some things you would have done differently or wished were done differently. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and remember, always look up in the sky.